Nigel West Dickens is an old swindler who poses as a traveling salesman when he is really a con man, and is purported to have a unique miracle cure for any and all medical and psychological problems, which he calls Nigel West Dickens' Elixir. He is an impeccable dresser and travels in an opulent and blazon stagecoach. John Marston, after having worked with Marshal Lee Johnson to clear Pike's Basin, is tipped off by Deputy Eli that West Dickens has gone missing. He states that West Dickens is missed by his repeat customers in Armadillo. Marshal Johnson equates West Dickens with a drug dealer. Thanks, Marshal. We're indebted to you with our lives. Just get them cattle back safe. All right. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Well done, Mr. Marston. Yes, well done. Now, about Williamson. I'll do what I can. You know, as you can see, this country is infested with all manner of scum. You say that again. Well, one other thing, Marston. Mr. Johnson, sir. It's Mr. West Dickens. He's missing. Who? Mr. West Dickens, the tonics merchant. He was doing town last week. Oh, the narcotic and bat piss salesman who cons housewives out of their money with promises of eternal youth. Yes, him, but I think you're being a little unfair. He's helped a great many of the county, and many of the townsfolk are really missing him. You hear that, Marston? We just butchered a gang of thieves, and the town is up in arms about a missing snake oil merchant. I am so glad to be serving such a wise and respectable people. Marston finds West Dickens having been shot and exposed to the elements not far from the stagecoach south of Coots Chapel, and returns him to the doctor in Armadillo while fighting off bandits who want to finish the job. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. Uh, St. Peter, open up them pearly gates. I'm coming home. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. Oh. 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 Hurry, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. I'm finished. Done for. Just sit up straight, will you? Oh, oh. Where the devil are we? Armadillo. We made it safe. You'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but... I appreciate the civility. Uh, I owe you, sir. Uh, and I always pay my debts. Uh, Jesus! But if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for... for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man for. Despite Marston's personal dislike of him, Wes Dickens becomes a central networker and orchestrator of Marston's plan to assault Fort Mercer. West Dickens puts Marston in contact with Seth Breyers and Irish, as well as supplying his newly armored stagecoach, and uses the Trojan horse strategy to deceive the outlaws. John? Marshal? Gentlemen! <clears throat> uh huh. <laughs> it's time. We must go. Why? What's happening? Seth has managed to get himself inside. <laughs> but we can't leave it too long, or they will soon realize how very curious he is and remove him from the premises. Or slit his throat and watch him bleed to death. But for a minute, he will delight and amuse them. That's when he'll get us inside. Okay. Marshals of the law, when the shooting starts, take that as your cue to start awarding each other medals. Hmm? I mean, take that as a cue to get inside and clean up the mess. Oh. All I care about is Williamson. It is vital we stop him. Agreed. That man is a stone-cold killer. Williamson's a proud fool. The question is which will win out between his pride and his instinct for survival. Welcome to my humble abode. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. Great.
Greetings, my good men. <laughs> what would you say if I said immortality was at hand? What would you say if I told you I could teach you to fly? <laughs> what would you say if I told you I could turn a man into a beautiful woman? <laughs> Impossible, yes, once, but no more. Gentlemen, I bring you wisdom from the East. I have here in this wagon some of the finest goods, the best medicines, and the newest inventions available for you and your families. Exotic trinkets from the far reaches of the earth, elixirs that give vigor and strength. <laughs> and uh, for you men of physical skill and athletic physique, uh, this miraculous elixir can keep the muscles supple and relax the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of vigor and freshness to the whole system. Why, some men have reported to me that after drinking it for one month, they can chew through steel. <laughs> what the hell? It's a trap! <laughs> Let's see what you got. The attack does well, but they find it that Bill Williamson had escaped yesterday morning. Iris then volunteers to take John into Mexico on a barge. West Dickens suggests that he intends to travel aboard, having exhausted all of his customers in the New Austin region. When Marston meets Iris at the barge on the way to Mexico, West Dickens is seen talking with Iris. This is when he tells him he is off to Europe or China. <laughs> yes, well, that's what makes you such an interesting fellow, Mr. Iris. <laughs> Ah, oh, Mr. Marston, I've come to wish you well. How are you, sir? I'm okay. It seems that our friend Mr. Irish here is well connected south of the border. Oh, it's true. Uh, they love me down there. It's like a second home. I've got more friends than you could shake a stick at, should you so desire. So you know the way. Oh, it's easy. We just get on me raft here and let the current sweep us away to paradise. <laughs> Come on, then, Dobby. I'm not sure your idea of paradise and mine are quite the same, Irish. Relax, we'll have a great time and we'll find your man Williamson no bother. I hope so. Hey, come on now. Look at it this way. I know we ain't exactly old cows, but you know, have I ever done you wrong? No, but not through lack of trying. Hey. Well, you boys have fun down there. I shall miss you, John Marston. Thank you. Where are you headed? You know me, oh, uh, London, or Paris, or, uh, or maybe Peking. I'm a traveling man, sir. This land is much too small for the likes of me. <laughs> well, try not to get yourself killed. Oh, well, yes, we men of science are not a very loved bunch in this land of myth and superstition. I'm off to the civilized world where men like myself are revered and given medals. Ha! Hmm. Have fun. The same to you, sir. The same to you. <laughs> He is later seen in the Blackwater Police Building, being arrested for possession and distribution of narcotics. John then recognizes him and tells the officers to release him. I, I have a patent for that, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, Mr. Marston. <laughs> You're alive. Hello, Wes Dickens. <laughs> Thought you were headed to Peking. Um, so did I. So did I. A long story. But now it seems I'm being put under arrest and charged with narcotic possession or some other such nonsense. Ross. Have him release this man. Why? Because he's a harmless old fraud, the kind of man that built this country. And because he helped me get Williamson. Did you hear that, officer? The man's a hero. Let him go. Come on, Marston. Moral degeneracy waits for no man. Let's hurry along. <laughs> 344. 345. One of the first newspapers that can be found and bought in 1911 has an article about Dickens' miracle tonic, stating it possesses extraordinary healing powers, saying a woman with one leg grew her lost limb, and a man on his deathbed got up and went to the nearest brothel with the vigor of a 14-year-old boy. It can be assumed that Dickens has greatly exaggerated, if not fabricated, these feats. On the other hand, the accounts could be true. If one would pay attention, they see the story never shows what happens to a person after drinking the elixir, except for the unfortunate man who drank the zombie bait in the Undead Nightmare DLC. After Marston drinks it, he gains a second level of Deadeye, showing the elixir may have something to do with it. In the events of Undead Nightmare, Wes Dickens is seen at Fort Mercer trying to sell his elixir for 100 coins, claiming it cures the zombie plague and repels zombies. He sees John and tries to get him to play along with his act. John ends up saying 100 coins is too much for a drink, and then threatens him with his revolver to give people free samples of the elixir. Dickens has no choice but to reluctantly give the customers free samples. However, he and John watch as a man drink the elixir, exit the fort, 
and immediately be mauled by the undead. Step right up! Step right up! Don't be shy now. Don't be shy. Nature confounds us, but science saves us. That's the truth, sir. That's the truth. West Dickens patented tonic. The only 100% original, 200% guaranteed cure against the undead stalking this earth. It not only brings health and fitness to the sick and needy, it repels the undead and saves souls! Why, it's a natural miracle! And it's available now, here, at the low, low price of only 100 solid gold coins! That sounds expensive, but what price eternal damnation! <laughs> you, sir! You look healthy. Would you like to give it a try? Me, sir? Yes, sir. Would you care to demonstrate the undead defeating possibilities of this patented elixir? No, sir, I would not. What I would like is for you to stop peddling this nonsense right now. 100 gold coins? Well, what price would you pay for survival? You tell me, Mr. West Dickens. You tell me. Well, since you put it that way, um, uh, why don't all you chaps all take one for free now? And uh, if you like it, when you like it, uh, you'll know where to find me. Uh, you won't find any undead around me. <laughs> take it, enjoy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, John. These people have lost their families. They've lost everything. Well, that's not my fault. I'm just trying to make an honest living here. No, you're not. Well, uh, Okay, but can I help it if demand is high? High? I'm offering the people hope, John. That's a precious commodity. The tonic really works. <laughs> These poor, awful undead creatures can't stand it. <laughs> Come here. Take a look. Works like a charm. Uh, well, it wasn't quite what I expected. Stuff is like catnip to those bastards. Uh, well, I'm, I, I need more desert sage and uh, violet snowdrop, and then I know I can cure this foul plague. Okay. Back to doing your dirty work, am I? Uh, don't be like that. Uh, don't you remember the good times? Please? I'm an old man! <laughs> All right. Here. Take it. Maybe you can use it to attract some of them. <sighs> okay. I'll see what I can do. And thanks. I'm sure this will come in real handy in case I want to meet some new and interesting friends. Upon second encounter, Dickens sends John on an errand to Riley's charge to acquire some metal parts he eventually uses to construct and complete a blunderbuss. John, despite Dickens' hasty words, is unimpressed with the weapon. Dickens also confides in John a branch of soldiers officially crossing the border to help those in Mexico. Dickens' age would disallow him to pose as a member of the group, and informs John of a group of army deserters stationed at the scratching post. When John asks Dickens where he's heading, Dickens optimistically replies that he is headed for either Baghdad or to meet his maker at the hands of the undead. Dickens leaves the scene on foot, and he is never seen again. But I thought things were better in Mexico. Uh, well, uh, better or worse, it's uh, certainly different. <laughs> so why am I going and not you? Ah, well, that's a matter of age, dear boy. The Army don't have many recruits with quite my level of experience. <laughs> so... So... You are on your own. <laughs> There's a train at uh, Benedict Point, and it's leaving soon once they've got all of the soldiers rounded up. Okay. And uh, your venerable friend here has done some more help. 
I have found some less than happy campers who have given up on glory and abandoned Uncle Sam's ranks. Uh, they're hiding out at Scratching Post. One of them might give you a uniform. <laughs> okay. And what about you? Ah! Baghdad, dear boy! <laughs> well, either that or Fort Mercer. Or perhaps it's time to meet my maker with drool coming out of my mouth and a lust for human blood. <laughs> <laughs> you take care of yourself. I always do, dear boy. I always do. <sighs> This is everything we know about the character of Nigel West Dickens in Red Dead Redemption. Thank you for watching.